And I'm just thinking that nobody takes a walk without there being a technique of walking. Yeah. Uh, nobody goes for a walk without there being something that supports that walk um, outside of ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, and that maybe we have a, a, a false idea um, that the able-bodied person is somehow radically self-sufficient. Yeah. It wasn't until I was in my early 20s, about 20 or 21, that I became aware of disability as a political issue. Um, and that happened largely through discovering the social model of disability, which is basically, uh, in disability studies, they have a distinction between disability and impairment. Yeah. So impairment would be my, my body, my embodiment right now, the fact that I was born with arthrogryposis, which affects, or what, what the medical world has labeled as arthrogryposis. Um, but basically that my joints are, 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 are fused, my muscles are weaker, I can't move in certain ways. And this does affect my life in mm -hmm. all sorts of mm -hmm. um, uh, situations. For instance, you know, there's a plum tree in my backyard. And I can't pick the plums off the plum tree. I have to wait for them to drop or whatever. Um, but then, and so there's that, there's that embodiment, um, our own unique embodiments. And then there's disability, which is basically the, the, the social repression of, of disabled people. The fact that disabled people have limited housing options, we don't have career opportunities, um, we're socially isolated, we're, um, you know, in many ways there's a cultural aversion to disabled people. Mm -hmm. So is, would disability be this? social organization of impairment? The disabling effects, basically, of society. What happened? Where, did you come in contact with disability activists, or did you read certain things? I, re I, read a, I read a book review, actually. Oh, really? Yeah, I just read a book review. And, and when that happened, I lived in Brooklyn. And I would, I would really try to make myself go out and just order a coffee by myself. Yes. And I would sit for hours beforehand in the park just trying to get up the nerve to do that. Oh. In a way, it's a political protest for me to go in and order a copy and demand help simply because, in my opinion, help is something that we all need. Yes. And it's something that is, is, you know, looked down upon and not really taken care of in this society when we all, when we all need help yes. and we're all interdependent in yes. all sorts of ways. My sense is that what's at stake here is really rethinking the human as a site of interdependency. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, when you walk into the coffee shop, right, if I can go back to that moment uh -huh. for a moment, and, and you, you ask for the coffee or you indeed even ask for some assistance with the coffee, um, you're basically posing the question, do we or do we not live in a world in which we assist each other? Yeah. <laughs> Do we or do we not help each other with, with, with basic needs? And are basic needs there to be decided on as a social issue and not just my personal individual issue or your personal individual issue? So, I mean, there's a challenge to individualism that happens at the moment in which you ask for some assistance yeah. with the coffee cup. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully people will take it up and say, yes, I too live in that world yeah. in which I understand that we need each other in order to address our basic needs. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I want to organize a social and political world on the basis of that recognition. Mm -hmm.